The new iPhone 13s are here, and as always, Apple has been a bit ambiguous about the cameras and the features of some of these phones. In this video, we're going to take a deep dive and figure out everything that we can about the photo and video functions of these new cell phones. Let's do a really quick overview here. There's four different phones, the iPhone 13 mini, the iPhone 13, the 13 Pro, and the Pro Max. All four phones have a 20% smaller notch and a slightly brighter screen. One big upgrade this year is that the Pro phones have a 120 hertz adjustable frame rate screen, which will give you smoother scrolling and animations. The Pro model screens also get slightly brighter, but when you look at the details of the screens and the resolutions, it almost appears that this is a software limitation and they've simply limited the brightness of the 13 mini and 13 to make the Pro models look a little bit better. And then maybe they've changed the hardware and the Pro models to allow for that variable frame rate. One thing that's a little bit easier to understand this year is that the Mini and the 13 have the same two cameras and the two Pro models have the same three cameras. Let's first start with the ultra wide angle lens on both the 13 and the 13 Mini. So in the keynote, Apple says that this camera has a new and faster sensor. What does that mean? I'm not exactly sure. And that's where things keep getting frustrating because Apple keeps using different metrics to compare very similar cameras. So they might talk about one camera and they might talk about the pixel size. And then in the next one, they will talk about the sensor size. And then they'll talk about how much light it gathers. And then they'll talk about the image performance. It's very, very confusing. What I gather from this is that it's not going to be a very big upgrade from last year's ultra wide camera. Keep in mind, you can't autofocus with this camera and it's not going to do very well in low light. Now, the standard wide lens on the 13 and the 13 mini is seeing an upgrade this year. It's got a bigger sensor. I believe it may be the exact same camera from the 12 Pro Max from last year. Apple says that it has 47% better light gathering. Keep in mind that that's only around one half of a stop better performance, so not great there. And it also has optical sensor shift stabilization, which is cool. But remember last year we did a comparison between the 12 Pro and the 12 Pro Max that had the optical stabilization and we really couldn't see a significant difference. Okay, let's move on to the Pro models. And in case you guys didn't notice, the camera bump on the back of the new 13 Pro models is gigantic. Does anybody else wish Apple just made the phones a little bit thicker to match the size of those lenses and then gave us the extra battery life? Is it just me? All right. Starting with the ultra wide angle lens, this might be the biggest upgrade this year. This new camera has a larger sensor, a faster lens, and it also has autofocus. So previous ultra wide angle lenses had fixed focus and pretty much everything just looked a little bit blurry. They also did really poorly in low light. Well, hopefully not anymore. And the autofocus now gives us the ability to shoot macro photography as well, up to two centimeters in distance, which is pretty incredible. Apple says that the standard wide camera or sensor is the largest they've ever put in a phone. It's going to have a very fast aperture and Apple says that it's 2.2 times better in low light than last year's version, which is a massive upgrade. Finally, moving on to the telephoto lens, which doesn't even exist on the 13 or 13 mini phones. The telephoto lens has a little bit more reach this year, which I'm personally excited about. I use the telephoto lens more than I use the ultra wide. And last year it had an equivalency of around 52 millimeters. This year it's bumped up to 77 millimeters. So Apple was really vague when it came to this telephoto camera. They didn't really mention many specs at all. And therefore I think it's probably going to give you very similar image quality to last year's 12 Pro model. I don't believe Apple mentioned it in their keynote speech, but Apple Pro Raw for still photography is still only available with the Pro model phones. This is a feature that allows you to do more editing and it gives you more dynamic range in your images. With the 13 and 13 mini, you're not going to get that feature. One feature that I've been really impressed with on my iPhone has been night mode. If you're shooting in really dark environments, it takes multiple pictures and combines them together to create a much brighter but still sharp image. Apple is saying that all three of the cameras on the 13 Pro and Pro Max will be able to shoot in night mode, whereas with the 13 and 13 mini, you're only going to get it on that standard wide camera. Okay, let's quickly talk about cinematic mode. Apparently all of the phones have this and basically while you're recording video, the iPhone will create a depth map of the scene and it will allow you to create fake shallow depth of field while you're recording that can actually be changed after the fact. Now I have to say when I was watching the keynote, I was pretty impressed by this. The footage itself didn't look too great, but the shallow depth of field where it's having to cut people out and blur the background, I thought that was doing an amazing job 
especially if it's able to somehow do it on the fly. But there is one problem, and Apple, of course, failed to mention this in the keynote. If you go to Apple's website and you start looking at the specs, you'll realize that this feature is only available in 1080. I don't know if this is a processing thing, or more likely it probably has to do with resolution, and if they shot this in 4K, you'd be able to see a little bit more of the artifacting as it's trying to cut people out, especially hair and complex scenes and stuff. So if you're shooting a really important video and you want it to look its best, you're going to have to decide between 4K, ultra high resolution, or 1080p with fake bokeh. I don't know, for me personally, I'm probably choosing 4K. One interesting thing about the cinematic mode is I would have thought you would have needed the LiDAR sensor on the back of the Pro models to pull it off, but apparently not since all four phones can do it. I went over to Apple's website and it says that the LiDAR scanner is for night mode portraits and faster autofocus in low light. I'm interested to see if that's actually true and so I'm going to buy the 13 and the 13 Pro and put that to the test next week. This year, Dolby Vision HDR recording is on all four cameras, and we did tests last year, and although it looked a little bit better on our iPhones, it looked much worse when we got onto the computer and it required more editing. So for me personally, I have not been shooting in this feature, and it's something that I'm probably not going to shoot on in the future. Later this year, Apple's going to be releasing Apple ProRes for just the Pro cameras, and this will allow you to shoot in ProRes rather than MP4 on the Pro model phones. Apple claims that this is going to give you much higher quality video and the files will be much more easily editable once you drag them over to a computer. I'm excited to test this later this year, but I'm also a little bit worried about file sizes. I'm on Windows, so I don't have AirDrop, and of course these phones still have the incredibly slow lightning cables, so slightly higher video quality may not be worth the extra time I have to wait to transfer the footage. How big are these files going to be? Well, Apple won't even let you film in 4K if you have the 128 gigabyte version. So make sure you upgrade at least to 256 gigabytes if you wanna shoot in ProRes. If storage is a problem for you, the standard two iPhones go up to 512 gigabytes, whereas the Pro models have a one terabyte option for the first time ever this year. So you may be wondering, is it worth upgrading to the iPhone 13 or 13 Pro this year? Probably not. Am I going to upgrade? Probably. Stay tuned because I am buying both phones, even though I might return them because I want to do a full review on the photo and video features of each.